So as Reverend James mentioned this morning, our theme for this month is simplify, right? And so I knew I was speaking this week, and I was looking for opportunities to find the lesson of simplify in my life. And right now, my life is really simple. Uh, I worked two and a half days this week, paid basically for the full week, but because of the 4th of July, I got two days off for that. We've got summer Fridays, so I worked a half day then. I, in my own life, I've had a really simple life. And so as I'm looking for these lessons, the first thing that comes up in my week that has a significant, significant impact on my week was the news of Alton Sterling on Tuesday of, of him losing his life to the hands of police. And with the whole idea of simplification, I didn't want to, I felt like there was no simple answer for what's happening with the relationship between the black community and police. So in my mind, I thought, that's not a good subject for this week. It doesn't fit into the theme. As if I'm gonna stand here and say, welcome to the world, Delia and Janaya. Now let's talk about racism. <laughs> I didn't want that to be me. I didn't want to do that. And then the, the news about Philando, I believe his Philando Castile came out the next day, who was pulled over for having a broken taillight and also lost his, his life uh, in the hands to police. And then there was the sh shooting in Dallas of uh, five police officers losing their, hand, losing their lives. So it just became something that it felt like I couldn't ignore, regardless of the fact that we had this amazing ceremony this morning. And so for me, the, my feelings around this issue have been the same as they've always been. I've been black my whole life. I, I know what it's like <laughs> to be black in America. And I've had to sort of reconcile, and, and this teaching has really helped me develop a relationship of peace. As Caressa Malcohaney started meditation with always expect the best, that lesson has come through to me through the science of mind. I get to walk through life feeling safe, feeling like I don't need to worry about anything that's happening. And there's lots of dangerous things in the world. Cars are dangerous. Uh, people get, lose their lives for all kinds of reasons, all kinds of random ways all the time. And so because of that, I don't have that fear. I've let go of my negative relationship because I grew up with a fear around police because it's essentially a, an issue that the black community has been facing pretty much from the beginning. When you think about the fact that black people started off as three-fifths of a person in our constitution, we've come to a point where that wouldn't be the case anymore. We all recognize that we all count as people. So I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful for the civil rights movement to allow for me to move freely as a human being in America. But at the same time, there's still a subversive issue in regards to the black community and police. And the black community has always known this, but now there are cameras. And so because of the cameras, the issue has gotten far more visibility than ever before. And you know, on one side, we have the black community saying, we need to do something about this. And on the other side, we have all lives matter. And what about black on black crime? And so as these debates are permeating, I'm left with the challenge of simplify. How do I present this? in a way that's simple. And I can say something like, always expect the best, but I wanna point to the concept of the silver lining. When we think about how we are, where we are today, it's because people have taken active action to do something. People have stood up for love. People have participated in peace rallies. My wife actually is planning to attend a peace rally this afternoon. Um, and she talks about how she, I actually just overheard this on the phone with a con conversation with a friend this morning of how she donates to people's bail uh, when they're arrested at peace rallies. And a friend of ours just happened to call this morning and said, um, she's a, a black friend and her white roommates wanted to go to a Black Lives Matter event. And she wanted to know, essentially, basically, I, I assume I was just listening to my wife's end of the conversation, um, of whether it was a good idea for her to, to go to this rally. She was concerned about being arrested herself, and her white friends wanted to have that sort of buffer to prove that they have an ally because they've got their black friend with them. And, <laughs> 
And so, you know, my wife said, well, if you end up in jail, I'll help bail you out. I appreciate that. You know, and I have this, and, and I think of the fact she didn't call me. She knows I'm a minister, but she didn't call me. And my wife knows her because of me. So I'm guessing that she probably called my wife because she knows my wife would bail her out. And I'm just going to say, trust, it's going to be all good. And she didn't want to hear that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the simple answer is, it, it is to, to trust that it's all good. But, but there is a silver lining for all of this. I heard on the radio this morning that Eric Garcetti is starting some sort of initiative to improve unity in the city. And when does Eric Garcetti ever standing up to say, we're going to do something about unity? And I think it's unfortunate that it has to be that someone loses their life over here for us in Los Angeles to say, let's do something about this now. But personally, I am so grateful for the fact that we are talking about unity and love and peace and equality in a bigger way. We're no longer saying, thank you. We're no longer saying Barack Obama is president, therefore we live in a post-racial society and we never have to talk about this again. That, that conversation has ended. We are saying, let's look at this, let's talk about it, let's do something for unity. So I'm so grateful for that. And so to me, the simple answer is to, do, to make a step, to have a conversation attend a peace rally, do something that feels right for you. And if this feels like it's something that's not hurting you at all, have a conversation with somebody who does feel like they're affected by this. Expand your consciousness, learn something, educate yourself. And so, thank you. So any of us can take one simple step. And if each of us take one simple step, we get to do something bigger, better. We get to be a part of expanding and living from a place of love, peace, and unity. So with that in mind, somebody just got a text message. I think this is James. Who is this? <laughs> Maria Ortiz texted you, just so you know. <laughs> uh, so I invite you all to take out your affirmations. I picked this one up from the, from the stool here, assuming that it was going to have this month's affirmation, and it doesn't. It doesn't. I'm glad I should have checked. It would have been uh, smart of me to check in advance. But thank you for running to get one for me. I appreciate it. And you all can oh, take yours out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. I will. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. So taking out your affirmations. I'm going to read this once, and then we'll read it twice together. I simplify my life and embrace the lightness of being. I simplify my life and embrace the lightness of being. One more time. I simplify my life and embrace the lightness of being. So starting with that concept of light, recognizing that we are light. We are the light of God. And this light, this perfection, this love is absolutely all there is that no matter what happens in the world, there is always light. There will always be light. And each of us gets to decide to act as that light, to express as that light, to know that this is what each of us are. And so I'm so grateful to step into the simplicity, the recognition of knowing that that's what I am, that's what each of us are. Recognize the perfection in all of us, no matter what. So grateful to know that we are peace, that we are love, that we are forgiveness, and that we are God. And so in gratitude, I release this word, knowing it is absolutely done, as together we all say, and so it is. I just wanted to honor the, um, I sat there very proud of this woman, this minister woman who brings such clarity and, and the fact that you took the theme and applied it to this 
<clears throat> I'm still a little verklempt. That was really beautiful. Can we have another round of applause? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I can't breathe, and I'm about to be dumped into the ocean. Ocean, Where, was it a lake? A lake. Dumped into the lake, and I am going to die. I am going to be sucked in under the water as if you could be sucked under the water with a life jacket on.